graduated summa cum laude from the Fisher College of Business at the Ohio State University in 2007. While at Capitol, Jeff worked as an extern for the Honorable Jeffrey S. Sutton of the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. He worked at the law firm of Porter Wright, Morris and Arthur, and for the Honorable Edmund A. Sargas, Jr. of the United States District Court. He also served two years on law review and was a summer associate at the law firm of Carlisle, Patchen, and Murphy. Jeff is married, and he and his wife, Kristen, have two children. Starting in September, Jeff will be working as judicial clerk to the Honorable Nora McCann King of the United States District Court for the Southern District of Ohio. Please welcome Jeff Parker. I was asked earlier this week to speak for the class at graduation. Now most people hear this and they think, great, you get to speak at graduation. As a graduating law student, I heard something different. I immediately heard elements. I questioned the word choice. I know what it means to speak. I know what graduation is. But what does it mean to speak for the class? If I'm speaking for the class, then it must be on their behalf. If it's on their behalf, then I'm not really speaking to the class, I'm speaking to the families, the friends, the faculty, the honored guests and attendants here today. And in that capacity, there's really only one thing I can say. Thank you. See, we come from different backgrounds. We're at different stages of our lives and our careers. We have different hopes and dreams. But every single one of us has had the support of family, friends, our faculty, and each other. And all of us, myself included, would admit that we couldn't do it without you. And for that, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the class of 2012. Now, as I said before, I was asked to speak for the class at graduation. Despite what I think that means, I'd like to take the opportunity to speak to the class. I'd like to start by sharing my inspiration for this speech. I came from two very esteemed individuals who I'm sure have had some impact on uh, numer numerous individuals in this great room here today. I'm speaking, of course, about none other than Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King. <laughs> I was watching The Lion King recently with my son, and after Scar kills Mufasa, he convinces Simba it was his fault. He tells Simba never to, to return to Pride Rock. And then Simba is rescued in the desert by Timon and Pumbaa. And the first thing they do is teach him their life philosophy. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> I thought to myself, what a message. You know, I should gain some brownie points with my son. I should cheer at graduation. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, Hakuna Matata means no worries. Now, it took me about a minute to realize it. But I realized, and I'm glad I did, that if Hakuna Matata, if no worries was my message, then my speech would be a disaster. Because the truth is, we have plenty to worry about. And probably more so now than at any previous stage of our lives. The recent recession has left the legal market in turmoil. Most of us are swimming in debt, about to take the bar, looking for a job. <laughs> now, despite the worries I may have, I believe we stand here today with the tools we have, the tools we need to succeed. We've struggled through writing assignments, countless hours of studying, reading, exams, and Professor Distler's matching problems. <laughs> Somewhere along the way, law school changed us. We're different now. We think differently now than we did three or four years ago. That's why our family and friends claim, I'd like to emphasize claim, that we overanalyze situations. That's why they claim that we argue over insignificant and it's well no longer watch an episode of Law and Order with us because we can't help but point out the blatant violations of the methods, law procedure, and evidence. It's also why when you decide to sleep in your car after having too much to drink, you have the wherewithal to put your keys in the shoe and a trunk. That way it cannot be determined under Ohio Revised Code Section 4511.19a to say law school has changed us. <laughs> we have acquired a vast body of knowledge, and we've been able to put it to work through volunteer work, internships, externships, writing assignments, summer jobs, full-time jobs, legal clinics, and clerk experiences. We have received a practical legal education that will help us succeed in any field we choose, and for that I am grateful. Sitting here today, we already have practicing attorneys, government employees, business owners, a supervisor of a construction company, 
an analyst at Abercrombie & Fitch, an auditor for CBS, and a financial representative at Northwestern Mutual. The opportunities are endless. No matter what road we take or what worries we may have today, I know that capital has armed us with the tools we need, we need to succeed. And for that, I am grateful and would like to thank the faculty sitting behind me. Now, I mentioned that the inspiration for my speech came from The Lion King, but it also came from another movie, The Sandlot. Uh, for those of you who have not seen it, The Sandlot is another children's movie. I apologize, I'm a three-year-old who watched a lot of children's movies. Uh, the story set in 1962 and it's about a group of boys who play baseball all summer long. A boy named Smalls is the new kid in the neighborhood. He knows nothing about baseball and he's desperately trying to fit in. So when the boys lose their last baseball and are faced with not being able to play, Smalls steps in, he swipes a ball from his stepdad, and they get to play again. He then proceeds to hit his very first home run over the fence and into the clutches of the beast, a giant dog who claims home run balls and everything else that comes over the fence. Now I didn't mention it, but the ball Small stole from his stepdad happened to be signed by Babe Ruth. Now after realizing the significance of this and spending days trying to get it back, Babe Ruth comes to the group's leader, Benny, in a dream. Now I know you're thinking get to a point, so here it is. In that dream, Babe Ruth says, everybody gets one chance to do something great. Most people never take a chance, either because they're too scared or they don't recognize it when it spits on their shoes. He says to Benny, this, is your chance. And if you follow your heart, you'll never go wrong. Now this hit me as a much more viable message than that of the, the wise Timon and Puma, and it's one I'd like to leave you with here today. Going to law school and graduating is a great accomplishment, but it's only the beginning. I know that we're not all going to work with the indigent in legal clinics as child advocates or even as attorneys, but somewhere along the way, every single one of us will have the opportunity to, to do something great. Don't let that chance pass you by. Don't get caught up in the rigors of your chosen profession such that you forget yourself or the reason why you decided to embark on the journey that led you here today. I want you to remember, not only as you sit here today and you reflect on the journey and you contemplate what road you take in the next chapter of your life, but I want you to remember this message in the next chapter of your life and in the chapters after that. If you follow your heart and you find and you do something you love, you'll never go wrong. Thank you. Okay.